Okay, so in this video, I want to work through a couple of examples of calculating delta H. Uh, just as a reminder that delta H, you know, for all intents and purposes from here on out, you really would just interpret delta H as being equal to delta E, okay? So uh, again, it's with the very, you know, clear exception that if you're having gases being produced or uh, consume that have different numbers in reactants and products then you have to worry a, bit, a little bit about it but for you know again for most reactions you would not have to worry about the difference between delta H and delta E. it would be very very small okay um, <clears throat> so in other words delta H itself would then give us in, uh, information about molecular structure you know what's in terms of changes in you know bond length and um, uh, interactions that the molecules uh, have in the reactant state and the product state and therefore it tells us something about how the reaction progresses okay so let's just kind of work through a couple of example uh, here's the first example on calculating delta H is really very similar to what you've done before uh, in in you know for the other calculation of energy right so in this case we're saying that we have a piece of lead uh, it has a mass of um, uh, 26.47 at a, a very high temperature. It's placed in a coffee cup colorimeter, uh, and the coffee cup colorimeter contains 100 milliliters of water. Uh, water temperature goes up from 22.5 to 23.17. Uh, assuming that all the components of the colorimeter, a styrofoam cup, etc., has no heat capacity or negligible heat capacity, in this case, in comparison to the water, right? The water itself has a fairly high heat capacity, uh, but everything else has no uh, heat capacity or very small. What's the specific heat of the lead? Okay, now so to solve this problem, um, it's really very similar to what we did uh, in one of the earlier problems, which is to understand this idea of thermal equilibrium that when the temperature of the two systems, the lead and the water, are equal to each other, we uh, the amount of energy released by one system, which is the one that's initially starting at the higher temperature, and the amount of energy released by the other system, the one that starts at the lower temperature, should exactly be equal to each other. Okay, in other words, negative Q of the lead should be equal to Q of water. Now, uh, given the information that we have, we can calculate Q of water because we have all the, diff the components that we need to calculate. So Q in this case is, um, Q of water is, uh, m c of water okay c sub s of water times uh, delta t of water okay now we we don't have m but we're given a hundred milliliters of water uh, if we have that we can find density of water and that should give us the um, uh, mass of water okay uh, density is not given in this case you can look it up or you can make a general assumption as long as you know that you're making that assumption that density is one grams per milliliter in which case we would just multiply uh, the volume times one grams per mil for the density of water now the actual density of water if you really want to find this out you would have to look it up uh, at a table and look it up for that specific temperature which is around 23 degrees Celsius but the value shouldn't be too far away from one uh, grams per mil and you multiply this by the uh, specific heat of uh, water which remember is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius and then you multiply this by the change in temperature which is uh, final temperature 23.17 minus uh, initial temperature 22.5 and what you get here is 0 0.67 degrees Celsius and you multiply all these three quantities together you got 280.0 uh, six joules of uh, energy or of heat being absorbed by the water okay now the metal is being uh, you know placed into the water uh, the water is inside the coffee cup colorimeter initially so this is the amount of heat absorbed by the water the amount of heat released by the metal therefore must be equal to this uh, but in the negative sense right so then uh, Q of lead it's just going to be equal to negative 280.06 joules and that should be equal to mass of lead times its specific heat times delta T okay and then we can then solve because we're being asked for this we can solve for that by taking negative 280.06 joules divided by the mass of the lead which is 20 
6.47 grams and then divide this by the temperature change. Now if you uh, think about temperature change, the final temperature of the water and the lead in the coffee cup colorimeter is the same which is 23.17 degrees Celsius. The starting temperature for the lead is 89.98 degrees Celsius and as we saw before one other time when we're talking about this type of calculation you notice that the value in this parenthesis in here for delta T is actually negative but net negative will cancel with the negative that implies the release of energy so then overall you get a positive number and that positive number in this case is 0 0.158 joules per gram degree Celsius. I want to emphasize that the situation looks something like this, right? You have a piece of lead. The lead is hot initially, so it releases all this energy into the water. The water is all in this uh, coffee cup kilometer and absorbs the temperature, you know, it absorbs that heat being released and causes the water temperature to go up, okay? Now, I want to emphasize that you could, you could have done this not just with a piece of you know metal like lead in this case that's hot initially but you can think about this um, you can think about this as a reaction as a chemical reaction itself right so I don't have to have to have this hot piece of metal I could have had an acid base reaction for example that I put into the water and then the acid base reaction happens and releases heat it's the same exact situation right it's analogous to this okay so if instead of um, instead of a piece of lead I have A plus B let's say that's acid and that's base reacting together and the same thing acid base producing heat okay then the calculation is identical to this okay except that now you have to figure out well you know are, are they are the amounts uh, equal to each other stoichiometrically or is one of them limiting is the other one limiting you know which one is limiting and there that's the one that's going to determine how much energy you're going to produce and we're going to actually show an example uh, to how to do this in the, in the next problem but just you know first thing I want to kind of really emphasize is these two situations are really identical in terms of heat calculation okay whether you have a reaction or whether you have just a, a piece of uh, metal releasing energy you're doing the same exact calculation okay all right okay so the next problem I want to work through is this problem right here uh, which says that you have a reaction uh, in a commercial heat pack for example you know one of these things that you buy at a at a drugstore and basically it's uh, uh, you can press usually the two uh, parts of the heat pack together together and then it would generate a lot of heat and the reason for that is when you press one uh, part of this uh, heat pack and you mix it with the other part then it uh, undergoes a chemical reaction and that reaction is a reaction that releases heat now one of the things that I, I have not mentioned so far is this uh, concept of um, heat release, uh, specific terms associated with heat release and heat absorption. So there's these two terms exothermic and endothermic that uh, I'm sure you've uh, encountered before but when um, a reaction releases heat to its surroundings, okay so the system releases heat to the surrounding we call that exothermic reactions and when a reaction absorbs heat from the surrounding we call that endothermic reaction and you have to remember that what we measure um, of course the reaction itself which is the reactants and the products that's our system right but the what we measure a lot of times is actually the surrounding because if we put a thermometer into a reaction flask for example we're not measuring the temperature of the reactants and the products themselves what we're measuring is the water that surrounds the uh, reactants in the products so what we're measuring is really surrounding so you have to kind of think a, a, a little bit about it in in kind of the reverse perspective so if a reaction releases energy or releases heat the heat is released to the surrounding the surroundings temperature would go up right so as a result when you have a exothermic reaction you're gonna see that the temperature that you measure would increase as a result because you're measuring temperature of the surroundings whereas uh, for endothermic reaction if you're thinking about the reaction absorbing heat then uh, it's going to absorb heat from the surroundings so if you have a thermometer here the uh, 
temperature you measure would you know temperature will drop as a result of a loss of heat from the surrounding to the uh, system okay so you have to think a little bit about it from the surroundings perspective when you're actually doing the experiment but that's what happens there okay so we're gonna what we're gonna do is um, we'll go back to that problem this problem right here in the next video